Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Abuja. Let's begin by giving you some updates coming from a boy state uh, over uh, the judgment which sacked the governor, his deputy, and some lawmakers in the House of Assembly in a boy state. Well, the Ebony State Governor David Omahi and his deputy Kelechi Igwe have asked a federal high court for an order staying the execution of his judgment, directing them to vacate their offices as governor and deputy governor of the state. In a motion on notice filed by their counsel, Chukuma Machukume, the applicants further prayed the court for an order staying the execution of the orders made in the judgment directing the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to immediately receive from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, the names of its candidates to replace them. The court also uh, uh, was seeking their, uh, gotten their prayers to stay the execution of its order directing INEC to hold a governorship election in accordance with the section 177, subsection C of the 1999 Constitution. In addition, the motion on notice dated March 9, 2022, is equally seeking an order saying the execution of the order of court directing INEC to immediately declare the persons nominated by the PDP as governor and deputy governor of a boy state, respectively. The further asked to, uh, to stay the execution of its order restraining the INEC uh, from recognizing or continue to recognize them as governor and deputy governor of a boy state. Meanwhile, the embattled members of the Eboi State House of Assembly, led by the Speaker Honorable Francis Inwifuru, says they, they are not averse to the validity of, today, uh, of Tuesday's ruling of an Abuja uh, Federal High Court declaring their seats vacant. Addressing the media on the position on the court's pronouncement, the Speaker says, as law-abiding citizens, that we continue to obey judgment. He further noted that he and his colleagues have appealed to the Tuesday's judgment of the Federal High Court in Abuja and believes justice will be served. When we received the judgment, we swung into action and file appeal. We have also filed the of execution on the matter. And we still have the rights as members of the State House of Assembly since we are dissatisfied with the judgment of the court. And the case is before the court of law now. Based on that, I will not deliberate on the matter again because it's already before the court of law and I will not talk more about it. So I said I should brief you and tell you the position of the House and the position of us, all of us, who's that judgment affected. So our position is that the law will take its position and uh, we urge the public, our constituents, to be calm and be law abiding. By the way, the nominee of the People's Democratic Party for the governor of Ebony State, according to the judgment that uh, the court has asked that the PDP should put forward a name uh, for the substitution uh, since uh, uh, the governor was sacked, is a member of the House of Representatives, uh, Igarwe Uduma, is asking Governor Dave Umai to immediately vacate office without delay. The lawmaker is relying on the judgment of the Federal High Court, Abuja, which sacked the Ebony State governor and his deputy for defecting from the People's Democratic Party to the APC. Take a listen to Honorable Igaraway. Apart from the order directing Governor Omahi and his deputy to vacate their offices, the court in Talia also directed INEC to immediately receive from the PDP the names of its candidates to replace Governor David Omahe and his deputy, and to declare those names submitted, to the, uh, submitted by the PDP as the, as the governor and deputy governor of a point state. While we acknowledge that INEC is in receipt of the communication from the national chairman of the PDP, we call on INEC as a critical pillar of our constitutional democracy to comply expeditiously with all the consequential orders of the court, particularly by declaring the names submitted by the PDP as governor and deputy governor. This the INEC is expected to do by issuing certificates of declaration of return. 
from the clear and unambiguous order made by Justice Inyang Ekwo. It is an incontrovertible fact that Governor David Omahe ceased to be governor of Ebony State on the 8th day of March 2022. Two days after this judgment, Mr. Omahe and his deputy still parade themselves as if they still occupy those offices. Honorable Igarwe, the nomin uh, nominated uh, governorship, uh, uh, the governorship nominee of uh, the PDP. But the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC says, it is yet to receive the true certified copy of the federal high court judgment that sacked Governor Dave Umahi. The National Commissioner, Fester Sokoye, who spoke exclusively to China's television, says uh, that the commission has, however, received a letter from the People's Democratic Party nominating a replacement for the governor and his deputy. Take a listen to Mr. Okoye. On the eighth day of uh, March 2022, uh, we received a letter uh, from the national chairman of the PDP, uh, and the letter was jointly signed with the national secretary, uh, intimating the commission of the said judgment and calling for compliance. Now, as of today, uh, we are yet to receive uh, the certified true copy of the said judgment. Uh, as a commission, uh, we do not operate on the basis of hearsay. As a commission, we do not base our decisions on social media reports, and we don't even base our, our decisions on newspaper reports. We base our decisions on the true intentment of judgments that we receive uh, from uh, the various courts. When we receive a judgment, we look at all the variables involved. We look at what the court has asked us to do. And also, if there are other surrounding issues, we look at them, and then we take a decision as a commission and convey to the Nigerian public and also convey uh, to, the, to the parties involved. Uh, so the commission um, has a history of obedience to court orders. Uh, the commission also has a history of being upfront with information relating to very challenging uh, national issues. And uh, so the moment we get a certified true copy of the judgment of the court, we'll meet as a, a commission, uh, take a decision, and then we convey such decision uh, to the Nigerian people. That's the National Commissioner of INEC, Mr. Uh, Fessus Okoye. Well, let's tell you that in Edo State, the national leadership of the PDP has weighed in on the crisis rocking the party. The national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Senator Yocha Ayu, has advised the party's leadership in Edo State to learn from the past mistakes of infighting. According to him, it has caused more harm than good from the records. He urged the leaders of the Edo State PDP to throw their weight behind Governor Godwin Obaseki with the general elections looming. Senator Ayu was speaking during a welcome rally in his honor at the Garrick Memorial Secondary School in Benin City, the Edo State capital. This my in-law is not going anywhere. We have captured him and through him we are going to reunite the people of Edo State. Let nobody deceive you that this governor is leaving PDP. There is only one organic party in Nigeria, and that is PDP. All those who have left PDP, the party didn't collapse. They all came back. They are back to PDP, and more are going to come back at the end of this month. It is going to be an earthquake. Nigerians will see how I will engineer the return of all our people who misrode and went to the wrong party. I led this party in 1999 to conquer the villa. In 2023, we shall be back in power in the presidential villa. Senator Yocha, are you the PDP national chairman uh, 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 waning on the crisis rocking the PDP in Edo State? Well, let's serve you with some of your political roundup stories. And when we come back, so many things to talk about.
the crisis in the APC and the wake of uh, Governor Boonin uh, being allegedly booted out uh, on the order of President Buhari. How true is that? We heard uh, Governor uh, Nasir Arufai yesterday, but it does look like there are some positions that are different from that of Governor Arufai, which we'll be hearing tonight on the program. Plus, uh, Senator Adelike received a certificate of return as the authentic uh, candidate of the PDP by the leadership of the party. But it does look like trouble may be looming because there is a parallel primary and a parallel candidate will be talking to us. Stay with us. So much to unpack. We'll be right back after your political roundup. Some members of the youth wing of the People's Democratic Party in Taraba State have threatened to boycott the forthcoming presidential and governorship primaries if the party fails to stick to the zoning arrangements of the governorship ticket to the northern senatorial district of the state. The youth vented their frustration during a press briefing in Dalingo, the state capital. They allege that they are aware of plots by some party bigwigs to retain power in the south senatorial district. We, the concerned southern Taraba PDP members, once again say it will be fair and honest that the power rotation be maintained and ensure that it goes to the appropriate quarter, which is the northern zone. Compliance with safety and standard laws as well as regulation is non-negotiable in preventing workplace injuries and enhanced business operations as well as increased productivity, which are to the benefit of the nation's economy. That was the position of members of the House Committee on Safety Standards and Regulations. The committee's chairman was speaking after a three-day oversight function with members of his committee in Port Harcourt, River State, where they threatened to publish the list of companies operating below the minimum safety standards by the end of April. By the time we roll out uh, the status of most of these companies and um, foreign investors sees that uh, they are not compliant and the safety of the expatriates or those coming to do one or two jobs with them uh, will not really be interested. Let me go to the big ones. People see the airport. With the countdown now That's in days for century. Governor Willie Obiano to leave the saddle of power of an Ambra state, some residents problem. of the state have been giving an appraisal Last of the governor's of performance for his eight-year tenure. And for former Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Chief Emeka Yauku, and Obio Vonicha, His Majesty Nameka Achebe, and other dignitaries, Governor Willie Obiano's eight years have brought significant developments in health, education, America, agriculture, America. infrastructure, and human capital. They were speaking during the commissioning of a 10,000 seating capacity international convention center in Oka, the state capital. And in Ebony State, members of the State House of Assembly, led by its speaker, Francis Wifuru, have said they are not averse to the validity of Tuesday's ruling of an Abuja High Court declaring their seats vacant. The lawmakers, while addressing the media on their position on the court's pronouncement, stated their readiness to be law-abiding and continue to obey judgment. They expressed confidence that justice will be served, having appealed the judgment. The African Democratic Congress, ADC, is advocating for 35% representation in elective position for youth and women in the legislative arm of government. The national chairman of the party, Chief Ralph Mwosu, during a stakeholders meeting at the party's headquarters in Abuja, considers the country ripe for young leaders who will use their intellect and exposure to prefer solutions to the nation's problems. He also noted that the party is working with other political organizations to form an alliance ahead of the 2023 general elections. The next set of legislators at the national level, at the state level, to be uh, young men and women, 35 percent. And with what I have seen, I'm encouraged that we are going to accomplish it. But there you have it, your political roundup stories. Well, the leadership of uh, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has presented a certificate of return to Senator Ademola Adeleke, who emerged winner at uh, the governorship primary conducted by the leadership of the PDP on Tuesday in Oshogo, the Oshun State capital. That action indicates that 
Senator Adeleke is a validly elected candidate of the party in Oshun State ahead of the governorship election that we hold later this year. But I'll allow you to listen to uh, Senator Yocha Ayu, uh, that uh, event where he was uh, the senator was presented with the certificate of return. I hope and pray that you will be our third governor under this set of peace, but we are going to win it. If it will be number two, I will show it will be number three. Because we are marching to the man, to the pillar, the man, the man. president next year, who will work with you, support you, to really develop the two states. Because as of today, there is no development in the so on behalf of the end of this year, I want to congratulate you, pray for you, and promise you that you will give you all the necessary support. Senator Yucha, are you there? When uh, Senator uh, Ademola Adeliki was presented with the certificate of return. Meanwhile, um, on the day of the primary, the governorship primary in Oshobo, uh, well, that was Tuesday, there was a parallel primary conducted by some leaders of the party led by former Governor of Oshun State, Prince Olagun Shoye Onyilola, and uh, former Oshun PDP Chairman Soji Adagundo's group, where Prince Dotun Babayemi emerged from that exercise as a candidate of the party. Well, they're claiming that they have the authentic conduct, while where the senator um, Adeleke image is also um, being, uh, it was conducted by the leadership of the party. So the question is that they claim that they have the proper structure, the proper delegates to elect a governorship primary. But what does the law say? What is the situation of, of things? Um, we're hoping that we'll be able to get and track down Senator Demola Adeleke to give us um, some his own side of how the story of his emergence came about. But let, let's speak to Prince um, Dr. Babayemi, who joins us virtually from Oshogbo now, the Osho State Capital. Thank you so much, Prince Babayemi, for joining us tonight. Um, you uh, emerged as the candidate of uh, your party from the primary conducted by your own group. Uh, what is the authenticity of that exercise, considering that it, wasn't, uh, it doesn't have the presence of the National Working Committee of the party? Uh, thank you, Shil. It's good to be on the program. Uh, the PDP as a party is a party guided by its constitution. And the constitution of the party states expressly that the party primaries uh, is a state congress. Section 25 of our constitution states specifically that the state chairman will chair the state congress. And in section 25, subsection 2, he states that the function of the Congress is to elect a governor. Now, um, we have several bodies uh, within PDP as a structure. Our topmost uh, body is the convention. Below that is the National Executive Council. Um, the National Executive Council has board of trustees members, uh, governors, we have 13 governors, um, he has um, our ex goes he has working committee members and people from the state. Below the neck is the National Working Committee that is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. So what you see happen today is a function, it's part of the electoral process. It's not the end of the electoral process. Um, a, a function of our party, the Working Committee, has uh, presented a certificate to someone. What we will see is now the ongoing process following our constitution to ensure that the authentic uh, candidates and the authentic delegates that voted on Tuesday, uh, their voice is heard. Um, the challenge in Osho started a while ago, uh, and it started again with the working committee at that time. Um, our ward congresses, we have 332 wards. In 215 of our wards, the, uh, the working committee of our party at that time sold two sets of forms uh, for what Congress is to two different chairmen of the party. Uh, one was legally removed and he insisted and said, no, I am still the chairman. And they sold 
two sets of funds for what Congress is for over 1,200 positions. So parallel Congresses were held. The party during this convention could not resolve it or should have caught court in the brochure. At the end of the convention, uh, the motion that moved to adopt the Congresses in the states excluded Osho State. Uh, there and then, um, the chairman uh, at that time went to court to validate his actions, all the actions that he had taken, uh, of which the Congress was a part. And on the 22nd of November last year, uh, a court of competent jurisdiction in Osho validated that he was the chairman and the actions that he took. On March 3rd, a court of competent jurisdiction said that the delegates that were on the side were the valid delegates, and they must vote at the primaries. Um, to the best of our knowledge, PDP has been and remains the law abiding in Nigeria. So a court order was given on the 3rd of March. Uh, on the 8th of March, we had our primaries. And those delegates from the 2015 wards uh, were the workative center, where six out of the six neck members, remember that's the second highest board, out of the six neck members in Russia State, Chris Oilola, who was an ex-governor, Irilu Obada, his deputy, Chief Shwaibu Oyedoku, who is the chairman, 86-year-old chairman of the Austro Elders Caucus, Senator Dr. Oluwalabi, were present in Waltip Center, where there were three other candidates, where I was elected by 2,000 delegates as the valid candidates to fly the flag of PDP on July 16th. Um, the exercise that happened uh, at the other center um, was people gathering together because one, the constitution supports what we did, constitution of our party. Also, uh, the court has said that these are the valid candidates. So, uh, like I said, we're in the process. Um, if you remember, if you go back in history, you will remember the case of Celestine Bumea, who again, the working committee at that time, insisted was the candidate of the party. He actually um, was the person that INEC recognized and was elected. But at the time of the swearing in, um, uh, Amici ended up being sworn in as the governor of uh, River State, because it's the delegates that voted for him. Exact scenario were the valid delegates recognized by the local people. We have to remember some convolution here yeah, uh, and some kind of confusion. Let, let's clarify it. Uh, based on the Electoral Act and the Constitution, what we understand is that the National Working Committee or the leadership of the party at a national level. Mm -hmm is recognized to conduct governorship primaries. But that it was not the yeah. case in your, at the primary, the parallel primary conducted by your group. How does that apply to you? And how do you think your own primary becomes authentic in the light of the provision of the law? I'm actually quoting uh, sections of the PDP constitution as amended uh, in 2017, way before this uh, National Working Committee got there. Section 25 uh, states that uh, a state congress shall be conducted um, uh, and it shall be chaired by the state chairman of the party. The congress where I was elected was chaired by the acting state chairman of the party, Barrister Wali. Section 25, subsection 2, uh, C, specifically states that the state congress would elect the gubernatorial candidate of the party. You see, the days where we think that people can sit somewhere um, elsewhere and impose uh, candidates on the party, uh, those days are long gone. Um, our people are sharp now, they're bright. Uh, we saw what happened uh, with the NSAS uh, a, a couple of uh, months ago. People are aware of their rights. So the people of Osho will not, they will follow the constitution of the party and follow the constitution of the country. But we will not, they will not allow uh, some people somewhere to impose 
a candidate not recognized um, by law uh, to be imposed upon them. So it's like I said, it's a long process. The electoral process is a long no, process. No, you, you quoted, so the, you the, quoted the constitution of your party, uh, which is, uh, um, is, is subordinate uh, when in the body of laws cons, uh, compared to the Constitution and the Electoral Act, which recognizes that yes. the National Working Committee, the national leadership of the party, should be responsible. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that, and we've seen it several cases where INEC is uh, mandated to recognize uh, the NWC as a valid body or the statutory body that will conduct a governorship primary. And so, and that's the basis I'm asking this question from you, the implication of what you have done and how in the eye right. of the law, whether it has any good standing right. or not. Oh, so it has good standing. Like I, I gave you the, the example that sitting, not only sitting, uh, but voting at that exercise were six members of our national executive committee who are from Osho State. We have a total of seven, six of them were there, and they actually voted at that exercise. Now, um, they are duty members, four of them are board of trustee members. Um, so, no, no, no. Uh, don't let us, uh, I don't want us to confuse is, things. There are members of the NWC yeah. and they are member mm -hmm. of the leadership of the party. NWC is totally different from those people that you have mentioned their names. Some of them are BOT members, some of them are NEC members. But what the, part, the, what uh, the law uh, recognizes is the NWC in the first place. Let me ask, was INEC present at your primary? Uh, Yes, INEC had representation because we had notified them. Remember the, the case that the delegates took to court, right? The delegates that went to court to say that we are the valid delegates. That case was actually against PDP and INEC as joint defendants. So when the ruling was given on the 3rd of March, INEC was notified that these are the 1,215 authentic delegates to vote at the governorship primary, and the order was given. And both PDP, our party, the National Working Committee, and INEC were served with the processes. Even though our head office was shot on the 4th of March due to a death of uh, the PRO in Guara State, um, the court was able to order substituted service, which was done uh, via newspapers and other means. Uh, so INEC was informed of what was happening, and they were actually notified of the primary system. All right. We, we are doing for a break, Prince Babai. I mean, uh, but before we do that, um, on a final note, give us a sense of what this means for your party. Senator Adelike is recognized by Sen uh, the Senator Yocha. Are you let NWC? And uh, perhaps we'll be submitting the na his name to INEC because... Uh, Senator Yocha Ayu is a recognized chairman of the party and is the one that, and the secretary, recognized by INEC to submit names of candidates. Where does this leave you? And in all of this crisis, we've seen this happen over and over again. The party gets to lose at the end of the day when this kind of parallel situation occurs. One of the things that I can assure you, Shil, is that the PDP will not lose out in this situation. Um, uh, you can be rest assured, and the people of Osho can be rest assured, that come July 16th, um, the PDP will go to the polls and we will win that election. Um, and I, I am sure that by that time, the issues within our party, it's a family issue, would have been resolved. Um, people will have taken a step back, our neck, we have internal mechanism to resolve these issues. And that is ongoing, we've started. We're positive that it will be resolved very soon. And by July 16th, when we're going to the polls, uh, PDP will win that election, the Australian state election, and I will be the candidate of the party. All right, this, uh, the situation in Australia at the moment just reminds me of 
what happened not too long ago um, with the Uba, uh, uh, with Uba and uh, uh, the candidate of uh, the eventual candidate of the PDP. Very similar what happened in Anambra State, but eventually it does look like uh, the, the party held sway. And I'm hoping and hoping that you guys will be able to resolve the differences at the end of the day. Prince uh, Dr. Babayemi, who is a factional governorship candidate of the PDP at the parallel uh, Congress uh, primary conducted in Oshogbu on Tuesday. Thank you so much for talking to us tonight. Thank you for having me, Shio. It's great to be here. Thank you. We we'll take a break, everyone, and when we come back, we dive straight into the situation in the ruling of Progressive Congress APC in the wake of Governor Nasir Arufai's interview with us yesterday and some of the issues that have come up since after that interview. So with us, everyone, the internal wranglings and the looming troubles in the emergence of Governor Sonny Bello as the acting chairman of the APC. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone. Let's get into the issues uh, and the crisis rocking the All Progressive Congress APC. Well, there appears to be more intrigues in the wake of the takeover by the governor of Niger State, uh, Governor Sani Bello, as the acting chairman of the APC Catechal Committee. Yesterday, Governor Nasir Arufai said President Buhari had ordered some of the actions that we've seen happening in the APC uh, since Monday, including that Governor Buni should step aside as he's proceeded on a medical trip to Dubai. But it doesn't appear to uh, gone down well the statement uh, and that position of the president or uh, the statement from Governor Arufai has not probably gone down well with some of the pro Buni group in the APC as they claim that the embattled APC Catholic Committee Chairman Governor Buni legally handed over the affairs of the party to Governor Abubakar Sani Bello. Take a look at um, the letter he was said to have transmitted uh, informing INEC and the party asking Governor Sani Bello uh, to um, uh, be in charge of the affairs of the party. There you see on the screen um, the, the subject being the transmission of office of the national chairman of the CECPC um, and it dated that it was going to be out of the country to the UAE on, from the 28th of February and it was built to return to the country on the 8th of March. So it brings to the question that um, uh, did the president actually say that Governor Boonin uh, should step aside? I mean, you know, he doesn't trust or he doesn't want him or what? Uh, now we understand that the, the Senator Akwan Udwede, the secretary, may have also been eased out of uh, the system. What exactly is happening? Let's hear uh, the other side of the conversation tonight. I'm being joined by a former lawmaker, uh, Honorable Kletus Obun, the chieftain of the APC. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. You watched the interview with um, Governor Na uh, Nasri Arufa yesterday. Very well. And uh, you heard that the president was the one who gave the orders about the situation of things. Um, apparently, not happy with the, the way a man of things have gone. What's your view on what exactly happened and the import of what the, the, said, the president said? Well, let me begin this uh, interview by saying that I didn't come here to defend or defer to whatever controversies are going on. I, I have come here this evening to discuss on the basis that the party APC must be saved because we have taken so much. This president wept in 2011 when democracy was being truncated with his cases. So he shouldn't be dragged into this high drama of incurable desperados. Now, about him giving orders, we cannot be running from dictatorship to another higher form of dictatorship. The president of Nigeria, everybody knows, once he resigned, had come to say that after the collapse of Russia, I remember him in the front page of Punch newspapers then, saying that since the fall of Russia and the USSR, that he now believed that democracy is the way to go. That is when he joined politics. I do not think that by his actions, utterances, and by his demeanor, he has deviated from believing in internal democracy. And that is why he never intervened in cases in which other presidents before him 
have had to physically throw out judges in order to get their party to stay in power, as it happened in Zamfara to us in APC, as it happened in Bayelsa, as it happened in Rivers, in which APC was shot out of a lot of uh, situations. And we have seen judges. Justice Salami, for example, was removed to arrest the judgment in Sokoto State, and all that we can give a plethora of them. This president was the first to congratulate Soludo when he won the election, even when our own candidate was ready to go to the tribunal. He was the first to congratulate. So he has the credentials that are impeccable and wants to leave that legacy. In fact, if there was any further doubt, the signing of the Electoral Act as amended today has sealed his place in history as one of the biggest Democrats we can have. Having laid this foundation, could it have been this same president? Knowing very well our Constitution, this party constitution, if you don't have a copy, I will leave one with you. So you will show me from page one to the last page, there are 33 articles in that constitution, apart from the preamble. There are 33 articles. There are 14 organs of the party in this constitution. I want to know those who are taking this decision and whom he directed beyond neck. We have a National Executive Committee in place. What was dissolved was the National Working Committee of APC. It was not the National Executive Committee. It's still in place. And that's by that organ, by this Article 7 of this Constitution and Article 13.3, the powers of National Executive Committee are clearly in, in, enunciated. It is unequivocal and explicit in this Constitution, unambiguous, that if neck created this committee, only NEC can take decision on it, and the president is well aware of it. If you remember, at each time they tried to go to the presidency for NEC meetings, he had always rejected it. So each time they go for consultation, they take it for a meeting. A meeting can only be convened by the chairman or secretary. This particular committee has only a chairman and secretary. There are no deputies. There's no deputy secretary, there's no deputy chairman, there's no co-chairman. And that is why it became necessary, because if they were, because it was a, on the basis of the doctrine of necessity that this committee came on board, that is why it didn't have the normal structure of the National Working Committee. Now, having donated and delegated its powers, NEC delegated its powers to this committee. Having delegated its power, this committee cannot delegate delegated authority. It is not known anywhere, whether in law or in governance, that you delegate delegated authority. So if the NEC, I mean the committee under Memalabuni had one of its members, that is the chairman, going out and transmitting a letter to say, I'm going out, this person should act from among us. And that is why the title acting chairman is here. This attitude of usurpation and power grabbing is quite astonishing, is quite embarrassing. And I think that those who have manage the information on what actually transpired. Thank God you showed that letter. There is a second letter both to INEC and to the secretary asking that resolutions were taken by the committee and that in his absence, they should follow that resolution, those resolutions leading to the execution of the convention, which is their mandate on the 26th. From today, it's two weeks to that committee. If we have taken for one year, six months, why is it becoming so jittery that we are being told that there was no intention when committees were already set up, even amended, you are saying that 1,700 out of over 40 million membership, strong membership of APC in Nigeria, 1,700 is too much for Eagle Square. Are they all going to sit in Eagle Square? They have secretariats across the state. We have done conventions over and over. Committee members don't sit in Eagle Square on the day of voting. They sit to do their job. Those who have to vote, come there and vote and go back. So what was the, that is for inclusion. The purpose of expanding those committees was for inclusion of party members who feel excluded and insulated or isolated from party activities. So that is one of the forum mm. in which there is interaction. But, but let's look at the premise in which, uh, I mean, when uh, Governor Nasser Europa, Fai, it was reporting his meeting with the president. And it was based on the fact that there are insinuations and there are possibilities of ambitions that are truncating. I mean, I will show you a court order which we showed on air yesterday that was waiting in the wings, uh, ostensibly, ostensibly being uh, used as a tool that was supposed to be used as a tool to truncate the March 26th National Convention. Do you think that the president should have waited and uh, or, or for that to happen and not take action? Again, this is where you have to deal with the intrigues of desperate political actors. This is act of desperation. I ask you. Which part of it is the act of desperation? That to suggest that there was a Memala Buni holding an injunction against himself. They have got three judgments cancelling three state congresses in Delta, 
in, uh, in uh, at, at Taraba last week, and another one waiting in Akwaibom. We have 210 cases on state congresses and the status of this, con this convention. 210 cases. Will May Mala go down and institute 210 cases against himself so that he will remain in power, a sitting governor? I do think that we are stretching absurdity to the extreme. This is absurd. And I want to say that the president, the president of this country should know better than any other person that the new electoral act which he signs gives you 21 days. And I challenge them to tell us they have written about two or three letters to INEC. INEC have rejected those letters on the basis that before them, there was a constituted executive with a chairman and secretary, and that they will take no other instructions or any other communication or dealings with anybody outside in APC, outside of this, unless there is a proper meeting which they will attend to see a change of leadership. What that means for us, and which is very dangerous. Because, okay, so let's clarify this. Yes. There is going to be a next meeting next week, Thursday. Who will call the meeting? Do you remember? Who has the power to call the meeting? Isn't the chairman and secretary. But there is an acting chairman and there is a secretary. This is what I'm saying. You can't have two acting chairmen. First of all, this man is enjoying delegated authority of NEC. He cannot delegate his substantive chairmanship to another delegate. It doesn't work. It is for the purpose of internal running of the party. Look, let us not keep the convention waiting. A letter has been transmitted. If he has to say he's a new chairman, there may be a forum, a platform under which he was so elected or is, appointed. Is Senator Akpanudwe the ST, the secretary? Of course, you can't Because challenge. you understand that things have changed now. Nobody has challenged that fact. In fact, what as, as, as Governor Sanibelo is saying is that he's acting for as you have shown in the letter you have here, that he's acting for Memalabuni. He was, he was properly transmitted to act, but not to go outside his powers. All right. Let me show you the court order again, uh, which we showed yesterday. Uh, the court order, I mean, there are being uh, 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 insinuations that the court order is meant to hold the party and that uh, the accusation is that the, some of the members of uh, the CEPC uh, are aware of these court orders, yet they have not acted in, on it, and they were hoping that they will use because of selfish uh, ambition and personal ambition are you going to use it to score to the chance of the party that's the court order then mr Urban. no no i'm not in doubt about the court order the are you aware of the court order i'm aware of, it has been paraded in the social media and all over the place it's all over it's a public document now i mean everybody has seen it but how dangerous could this be because yeah, your party has changed it from, I think, 8th of February to 26, from 26 to March 26. Yes. And it's looking like with this court order, that March 26 wouldn't have happened until the intervention. If there is this order, first of all, what that presupposes with this court order, now, it already means that there's a subsisting order. It wouldn't change the fact that it has come out to the public. It doesn't change the fact well, that it's it an exists. ex-party order, you can vacate it. This is what I'm saying. Though. It will require vacation. That means starting afresh to serve a new notice to INEC for 21 days as All required right. by the uh, Electoral Act. Uh, so, wait, 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 hold on, Mr. Point, Mr. Urban, uh, We've since been joined by another very senior member of the APC, a chieftain of the APC, Senator Smart Adeyemi, has since joined us on the program. Thank you so much, Chair Distinguished, for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure being here. How do you feel about the situation in your party? Right now, it does look like the center is no longer holding. Well, I, I don't think so. Um, looking at the scenario that we have today, I think it would be wrong for anybody to assume that uh, the leadership of uh, Mala uh, uh, Boni. Boni has failed. In the first instance, he transmitted a letter, he wrote a letter that he was traveling. And in that letter, he did say that um, the governor of Niger State should act and in that same letter, he urged party faithfuls and members of the uh, caretaker committee to give their support to the acting chairman. So for me, I do not see any problem there. I do believe that what is happening is perhaps some people trying to uh, do some calculations and uh, work towards uh, their own candidates uh, to emerge at the end of the convection. I think one thing we should bear in mind is that uh, when Mala Mboni came on board, the APC was in a serious crisis, and it was heading for a rock. And if you want to assess a leader, it is when there are crises, you know whether you have a good leader or not. 
when he came about, he was he succeeded in bringing in men and women of um, of, um, of of timber, men of uh, integrity, men of honor, good citizen politicians were brought into the APC. Today, the APC is more formidable than ever it was before he came on board. So, for some of us, we hold the view that um, if Malabuni should have to go, I think he should not he should not be treated as if he has failed and that he's been uh, sacked. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, some of these stories you are you are reading and what people, some people are saying is just for selfish interest. This man has not failed. He wrote a letter that he was going on medical treatment, and in that letter he did explain that um, uh, his deputy should 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 should, should, should uh, take charge. But I mean, and, are you faulting the uh, the position of the president when he says? I mean, from what Governor uh, Nasir River said here yesterday, that the president said he wanted him out. Well, and we should conduct uh, the prime. Uh, we, we, we do respect to Mala Erufa. And let me say, I speak on behalf of quite a number of us who are members, who are serving senators today. Okay, we had a meeting two days ago, and in that meeting, there was no any information reaching us about that statement. What we have today is the fact that there was a letter written by the by by Malam Malabuni saying that he was traveling and in that letter he did transmitted power so to speak to uh, the governor of Niger state so I wouldn't know whether uh, where you want to put that as to what um, Malam Erufa have said and the letter that we have with us so as far as we are concerned in the Senate in the National Assembly we are not aware that Mr. President gave a marching order for the the, 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 the the acting chairman I mean the acting chairman to vacate his office what we have and what we know as senators was the fact that there was a letter from data 28th of February in that letter Malaboni did say that he was going on medical treatment. But, now, 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 at this period when we are moving towards election, don't forget that everybody is having one interest or the other to protect. Okay? But what we have is what we are talking about. There was a letter to that effect. And I think it would be wrong for anybody to assume that. I, President I, I'm, is, I'm sure you must have heard yeah. that as soon as this letter uh, surfaced, yeah. uh, there was a denier that this letter never happened and never, was never transmitted, that in fact this letter was produced and backdated. Well, it depends on the, who is speaking. The, the, the man who wrote the letter has not denied he wrote the letter. So no, there are reports uh, saying that uh, Governor B Sani Bello had said that the letter, well, he never saw any letter transmitted to him. Well, we, we, to we, him. we saw the letter in the National Assembly. Yeah, we got the letter, and because we got the letter, we want to believe that that letter was authentic because it was not forged. The man didn't deny that he wrote the letter. So there's nobody that is in position no, to deny the letter a, that he wrote. There's a letter it. transmitted from one person to the other, yes. and the person, the recipient of the letter said he never received it. Well, anybody can deny any letter when you talk about politics. People okay. can, de people can you, deny. Senator, if you write a letter yeah. to me yeah. and I never get the letter, yeah. what is the answer of the letter? So I, 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 assuming, come assuming the letter was sent to your office and so one or two people got the letter and kept it, what happens? Will you say the letter was not written? So what do you think is the entry that is happening, the Senator? The entry is that, look, we are moving towards the, the national, the, the general election, and we are talking about the party convention. So quite a number of people have interest to protect. That is the game. It's, it's just a game that is, you see, when politicians are playing their game, you need to be part of them to understand what is happening. What is happening is that some people are building a force, some people have some candidates in mind, some people hold the view that some people should not be allowed to move forward. So these are the games that are coming up. But the first thing remains that Mala uh, uh, Buni, Perform excellently well. He brought in seasoned people, serve former governors, uh, former general, I mean generals, statesmen. He brought them back to the APC. So today the APC is more formidable. In fact, we owe him some level of gratitude for what he did. Martin Luther King said the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands at moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at moment of challenge and controversy. Booney came when there were crises in the APC. When the APC was almost collapsing, that's when he came. And he has succeeded to put this party together. He has consolidated the party the more. We are cruising to victory. OK? Uh, uh, let me, uh, may I ask you, is there any opposition party in Nigeria today? The APC still remains the most formidable party under his watch, under his leadership. And that's his stance. So what is happening is that there are uh, people... I'm not who, sure the president is saying the same thing, based on what uh, Governor Arufa said yesterday. Well, if well, you are seeing this, I'm probably I, I'm not, the president is seeing something different. I'm not, I'm not in position to, 
to contradict what Mala Erufa have said. I'm talking based on the fact that I have, and I say the fact we have as members of the Senate. The fact we have is that there was a letter from Mala Buni, and this letter, we went through it, and we saw it when it was dated, and never was made to talk to him, and he confirmed that he actually de de delivered the letter before he left. So if some people are playing, uh, playing games, it is not all of us that will fall into this right. trap. Okay, just a moment. If, should um, uh, Mala Buni, Governor Ma Buni, return from Dubai today, what do you think will happen? He will preside over the next meeting. Let me say this. Like he rightly pointed out, Memala was a stabilizer. APC should not create a legacy of throwing out its best products. We have seen the change and violent change, dismal change of leadership in the APC in a manner that shows that the harder you work, the lesser you get acknowledged and appreciated. It should not be our legacy. And that is why the next chairman must be a stable bureaucrat who has qualities that can bind this party together. Look at the chairman of PDP today from Benue State. If we do not arrest this drift of these political undertakers, we are going to run into a major, major crisis as a party. We need a stable, level-headed, fast-moving political bureaucrat and who has the, 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 the swerve, who has the energy, who has the mental capacity to keep everybody in the party Let together. That's why the Senate caucus even gave a vote of confidence. There is another group in Sokoto State gave a vote of confidence. Let, to me, the let me ask the senator. Yes. Senator, what do you think is the is the, the as the bottom of all of this uh, in, in the in the in the in the final analysis? What do you think is really at the center of this? If the the governors are divided, chieftains and leaders of the party are divided. And you have a national convention just less than 20 days? I, I, I don't think the governors are divided. I think there's a break in communication. And let me only let you know that when Mala, um, Mala Buni is back, it is left to him as to whether he wants to continue to remain as a chairman. He, he may decide to say, okay, he, he's, he's going, he wants to leave. So it is an, uh, an opinion for him to make. It is not for anybody to determine whether he's going to continue as chairman. It's for him to decide whether he wants to continue. The fact is, he wrote a letter. Nobody is disputing that. Those who are disputing this letter have reason to dispute the letter. Because, I mean, the, the question mark that has been raised yes. is why has it not been able to um, immediately, uh, Sonny Bello assumed office? Yes. He inaugurated AP, uh, the chairman across the state. The, the zoning arrangement was released. Uh, they pruned down the, the, the names of uh, the, uh, the, the delegates, uh, the, the, the the delegates and all of committees. That. So it does look like there was a swift action. And uh, the allegations are that when Buni was around, Things never moved. Please. Well, it depends on, which, yeah, it, it depends the on the perspective you are looking at it. What, what he did was to say he was traveling, and he did say that the leadership and the powers of that office is already trans Give it, given to, um, to, the, uh, to, to Governor Bello, that he continue. So yeah. it's left for him to, re to review the, the arrangement on ground as to whether it's going to fit his own thinking, okay, or not. And let me tell you, members of the Central of the, of the, of the, of the Katika Committee who are not talking, why were they over the years? Are they saying that they were not part of the decision taking when they were part of that team? Senator, let, of let, let, yeah, let's close now and let me ask you, yeah. what is your biggest fear and perhaps the way forward for the APC in this, in this quagmire? Well, let me just say this, and I want to say this as a statesman. The next election is not just going to be on the basis of party affiliation. It's going to be who are the candidates coming? Nigerians are wiser now. It's not a question of APC. I may be APC man. I believe in my party. But my party must equally bear in mind that it depends on the kind of pa pa uh, candidates that I imagine. The quality of candidates. The quality of candidates. People will be asking questions. It's not going to be business as usual. Nigerians have learned over the years right. that pa political parties in Nigeria are not ideologically based. They are just a platform for All people right. coming together. So Nigeria will ask, who is this candidate? So you must get the best of the candidates right. to match. So the way forward for your party, out of this quagmire, what's the way forward? For me, uh, the best thing for this party to do at this stage is for the president to step in and enact his establish he he has has what we are hearing here is mere rumor because this president is too experienced to endorse and come out to give himself the banner and the badge of a dictator by dictating to the party leaving the organs to do one or two or sack one or two persons. I want to say that our party members, for the sake of democracy, whatever happens to APC and Nigeria will happen to the entire Africa, African continent. Nigeria is the eye and the heart of Africa. All right. I, I just, don't, don't rule out the possibility that perhaps the president was even aware 
that Mahala uh, Boni actually wrote a letter. He may be aware. And on that basis, he may give an instruction. Uh -huh. Even Within the letter itself, sir, an the letter that itself aware. said, please go ahead with the resolutions we yes. have taken to the convention on the convention. Well, well, the letter said so. But they didn't challenge that the letter was actually was uh, backdated. It is, but, yeah, I mean, those are, but who, when, who, when, who proved that it was I backdated? Mean, who it because proved it? been reported that Governor Bello said he never see an... Why did he say it, he was an acting chairman? Why did he say he was an acting chairman? He said he was acting on behalf of the chairman. No, who gave him the power to act? Thank you, gentlemen. If there was a meeting to say act, it would have been so yes, we are totally out of time. Senator Spanta DM, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for thank coming. My pleasure. Mr. Auburn, thank you so much for coming. But that's our day. show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye for now.